I'm Karen Berniston, the designer of Pop It Up Styes for Elizabeth Craft Designs, and I'm here with my monthly technique video. Now this month we're going to be focusing on double pivot cards. I'll be using the Evergreen Pivot Card, number 912, for this technique video. It is for the designer challenge. So this month I challenged the designers to make either all red, all white, or all blue cards, and so this is going to be my all white card using the doubling technique with the Evergreen Pivot Card. To double the evergreen pivot card, I'm going to start with a 5.5 inch tall by 12 inch long strip of cardstock. And then my first step is just going to be to score it right up the middle for folding. So I'm putting it on my scoring board, scoring it at 6 inches, and that will allow me to fold it in half. Now I'm going to open that right back up again. Now to find my other two folds, I first need to go to the die itself and measure how far the right side of that die is from the center line out to the edge of the tree and then come back in a little bit. You can see two and a half inches would be just perfect so that that little tree will stay connected to its neighbor when it is doubled. So now I just have to put those two score lines into the strip. I'm going to start at the center line. I'm going to count out two and a half inches off the center and score in that direction. Then I'm going to count two and a half inches off the center in the opposite direction and score there as well. And then now it's just a matter of finding those folds and folding it like an accordion, which means a valley, then a mountain, and then another valley fold. Now if you plan on wallpapering your panels, it's good to do that before you die cut. So let me show you how I did it for my specific card. I wanted to tone down the music notes on this piece of white music paper, and so what I did is I just painted it with some white acrylic paint, and while the paint was wet, I dropped some cool diamond microfine glitter into the wet paint and just let it dry. Now to keep that paper out of the folds of my card, I decided to cut them down so that there's a little border of white showing around each panel. So my outer panels, my bigger ones, would be three and a quarter wide by five and a quarter tall. And then my inner panels are going to be two and a quarter wide by five and a quarter tall. And then I did just make sure that I used enough tape runner when I added this so that after die cutting, the paper isn't going to want to come off of the tree area. So I went ahead and kind of shellacked it. Now it's ready for die cutting. So where I'm going to line up the evergreen pivot card die is actually on the left fold of the card. So you'll see there I've used the alignment nubs. I've got my evergreen pivot card lined up on that first fold anywhere along the fold. And now I'm going to fold the second half of the card to the back. And you'll see that the little tree kind of hangs off the fold a little bit so that it will stay connected and hinged. Now if I had used a lighter pattern paper for my wallpapering, most likely rolling it through and then right back through again would be enough to cut through both layers. However, this time I used a very thick wallpapering paper, the stuff I had painted. So in my case, I'm going to have to go back through and open the card up, nest the die right back into the other side, it'll go right into the grooves, it'll be easy. And in this case, it was just a little bit of the small tree that didn't quite cut through. It is important that my cutting pad stops short of the fold so that I don't actually cut the end of the tree. Remember, I still want it to be hinged. I just want to give a little added pressure to that second half of my evergreen pivot card. I can give it a quick check and see that it did a beautiful job. It's cut all the parts of my tree except where I want them to stay hinged in the middle. So for training pivot cards, I always say find the folds in both directions. So I found the center fold and now I'm going to find the left fold in both directions and I'm going to do the same with the right fold. And what I want to end up after training those big folds is that I have a valley, then a mountain, then a valley with my big pages. Now the pivot parts are going to pivot the opposite of the big pages, so it's a matter of kind of working the connection between the big tree and the little tree and then the connection between the two little trees so that they start to go opposite the big pages. Then you should be able to grab the two big trees and carefully close the card, working those trees to pivot opposite the big pages and then just give everything a good squish. Now you can see what you've got. You've got this really cool double pivot card. Backing cards are always optional with pivot cards, but for this particular card I decided I did want to put a little backing strip on it. So I've added a piece of decorative ribbon around a strip that's big enough to slide in behind my big tree on the front of the card, and it will cover up that hole so you don't see all the way through the card. And then I'm just going to repeat that process for the other three panels. So I'm just going to glue them in there, kind of behind the trees. And then what it'll do is it'll just stiffen up the card a little bit and then I won't have any kind of peekaboo holes anymore behind the trees. The evergreen pivot card comes with all the trees you need to decorate the card too, which is wonderful. So let me show you how I made these decorator trees. 
I started with some shelf liner that was silver. Now that is thin and self-adhesive, so I went ahead and applied it to a piece of white cardstock just to make it a little bit thicker. And then it's just a matter of using the decorator dies that come with the Evergreen Pivot Card set to die cut three decorator trees. Now I don't want to immediately pop those out of the die because I'd like to take advantage of that built-in emboss feature on those dies. Now you'll need to check with your machine's manufacturer to find out what the proper sandwich is for embossing a wafer thin die. But I can tell you that for a Sizzix Big Shot, you're going to go down to tab one on your flip tab platform. The bottom is going to be the impressions pad, that's hard, followed by the silicone, which is soft. And then your paper, which is still in the dies, goes against that squish, cutting pad on top, and roll it through the machine. Now what that'll do is that silicone is going to push that paper up through the holes of that die and it will make an embossed pattern on the front of the die. So then when you pop that out of the die, you're going to see those really pretty embossed swirls on the big tree. The other two trees also have embossed features. The middle tree has these cool waves that go through the tree. And then the small tree has little polka dots. Now the silver is beautiful and it would look beautiful just like that, but this is an all white challenge. So I'm going to alter these trees now and paint them with just some inexpensive white acrylic paint. And in addition to the three silver trees, I also cut three out of some corrugated paper. And that's just gonna go behind those trees to give them a little dimension. Um, I still do want the even the corrugated to be white because you'll see a little bit of it from the sides. But I'm gonna be a little sloppy with my paint on this and if a little bit of that craft color is still visible, that's fine with me. In terms of the silver trees, I am going to completely coat them with the white paint. And then what I'll do is when they dry, I'll end up sanding some of that white paint off. Now in the meantime, I'm gonna to go to the little bow ribbon that comes with the Evergreen Pivot Card set. It normally goes on top of a present, but in this case, I'm gonna use it at the top of the tree. So all I have to do is snip off that piece of ribbon that goes down the middle that's meant to go on the, the present so that it ends up just being a little bow for the top of the trees. I actually cut enough bows to decorate the tops of all the trees, including the little junior trees, although you don't really see those bows back behind there. Then on the front and the back of the card, I also added a little half bow, kind of just attached flat on the card, so that in the closed position, it would look correct. And then I did that again on the inside of the card as well. Once the paint has dried on those silver trees, then I can take a sanding block and just sand off some of the white paint. And I kind of tend to do it in my hands so that I can bend it a little bit and just really get onto those swirls and that embossed pattern and get some of that paint off of there. Then I'm gonna to add to the decorations by using some transparent silver glitter dots. And I'll just add those using my Elizabeth Craft Designs tweezers into some fun patterns, swirls and dots and things like that to decorate those trees. Now I still have those corrugated trees that are gonna give my trees some extra dimension. So what I like to do is just kind of bend up the sides of the top tree because I'm only gonna use my glue right up the middle of that tree to attach it to the corrugated one. And I'm gonna go back to my favorite glue dispenser, which is the Fine Line 20 gauge applicator bottle filled with my Scotch Quick Dry adhesive and just add some adhesive right up the middle of that tree to attach it to the corrugated one. That shelf liner does kind of hold its shape a little bit so you can see that it has got a little dimension to it when you get those things together. And then I'm just gonna repeat the same exact process for my middle tree and my junior tree. And then after making those three trees, I am going to make three more in the exact same way. And now those are ready to add to my card. I get a lot of questions about where to find the fine line applicator bottles and they do come empty and then you'll fill them with your favorite glue. My favorite glue in them is the Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive. Now I'm going to suggest you just go to your local craft store. No matter where you are in the world, they should be able to order from Notions, which is an international distributor and Notions does carry the fine line bottles. So they need to make sure that they search for one word, fine line. So don't make it two words, it's one word and then they will be able to order those for you. And like I said, many glues will work in them. My favorite is the Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive. You know, once all my trees are glued in place, this card really doesn't need much more. It's quite pretty with just that subtle background and those striking trees. And now all I'm gonna do is add a greeting. Now, 
if you haven't had a chance yet to try the new Elizabeth Craft Designs Clear Double Sided Adhesive, you are going to fall in love. It has been re-engineered to have a much thinner backing sheet, so it will die cut just beautifully. And it also holds the glitter really, really well. It doesn't have any gaps in the adhesive, you know, to leave anything sticky. It's just wonderful stuff. So what I've done here is I've applied some double-sided adhesive to the back of some white cardstock. And then I'm going to use the Elizabeth Craft Designs Merry Christmas die and just die cut that through the cardstock and the double-sided adhesive so that it will be a sticker. And if the liner comes off while you're removing it from the die, no big deal. I'm about to add it to my card anyway. But what I'm going to do for this card is I'm actually going to use two of them stacked on top of each other so that I can get some additional dimension since I'm going white on white. So once again, I just ran back through and die cut a second set with that cardstock that had the double-sided adhesive on it. That makes it a sticker. Then I can just stack them right up on top of each other and get a little bit of dimension to my title. So there you have it. One cool technique of doubling the evergreen pivot card. I did it with all white with some silver accents. You could take this as a recipe and make it in another color. Hey Facebook users, if you will head over to Karen Berniston Designer on Facebook and like the page, you will start seeing some really cool links to amazing cards using Pop It Up Styes start showing up in your newsfeed. I post new links almost daily. You can also find out where you can purchase your own Pop It Up Styes by going to ecraftdesigns.com or check with your local independent scrapbooking and craft store. Any of the pivot card dies can be doubled. I've got a video for my all blue card using the Katie Label pivot card, and then I've got a video for my all red card using the heart pivot card. So check those out on my YouTube channel. You can get everywhere by starting at KarenBerniston.com. Thanks for watching.